Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing uh, two more EKG patterns that are very similar, but they have a very important difference, and that's where the electrical signal arises from. And those are premature atrial contraction, or PAC, and premature ventricular contraction, or PVC. We'll start off with the premature atrial contraction, and I want to start off by just following uh, the cardiac cycle. We're going to see some normal cardiac cycles, but then we're going to be interrupted uh, by a premature P wave. Okay, So we look over here on the far left. Here's a P wave. Here's a QRS complex. And then if you look right here, we see a smaller QRS complex. Typically in premature atrial contraction, what you're going to see is a fairly normal looking QRS complex, but it's much smaller. Um, and typically the amplitude is gonna be shorter, but it's still narrow. Look at this QRX complex, okay? You can even look at the R to R distances also. Here's the distance between the first QRS and the second, about the same as the distance between the second and the third, but then you can clearly see here that this QRS complex is premature. And why is it premature? Because of this P wave that occurs right before it. Now technically, this is probably both the P wave of this QRS complex, the premature P wave, and the T wave of this that follows this QRS complex. They're really in the same spot, so they kind of cover each other up. But really, we're thinking about this as the P wave that's premature. And remember what the P wave represents, it's atrial depolarization. So that will travel through the electrical conduction system and it will trigger ventricular depolarization, which is that uh, QRS complex, okay? But the thing to notice there is that that QRS complex is occurring prematurely. Why is it occurring prematurely as denoted by the RR distance that's smaller? Because the P wave that precedes it is occurring early. The P wave is premature a premature QRS complex will immediately follow that P wave. Notice over here, we go to the next cycle, there's a P wave, QRS, T, so that one's normal, but then we get to this one over here, P wave, QRS, and right here is actually another premature P wave. How do I know that? Because here's a small QRS. Notice that those premature QRS complexes are shorter. They're lower in amplitude, and they're going to be preceded by uh, that premature P wave. Okay? Why do we call this premature atrial contraction? Because there's a premature P wave. There's premature atrial depolarization, therefore a premature atrial contraction. Now, the important thing to really get here before we go to the PVC, the premature ventricular contraction, is take a look at that QRS complex that's premature. It looks fairly normal. Again, it's not completely normal, but from the perspective that it's narrow and it looks like a smaller version of the normal QRS complex, we could say it's more normal, relatively speaking. Because now when we come down to the premature ventricular contraction, look at this guy right here. This QRS complex is very abnormal. Okay? And the reason we say it's abnormal is because it's wide. When you see a wide, rounded QRS complex, that is an indication that that electrical signal was not um, originating from the atria. Okay? All these signals up here, regardless of whether or not they're premature, both the premature ones and the normal ones, all those signals originated in the atria, probably from the sinoatrial node or just something in general in the atria. When you see a QRS complex that's both wide and rounded at the top, uh, that's a sign that that signal was not from the atria. It was exclusively created by the ventricles. And so you're gonna, it's gonna manifest differently. Let's take a look at the premature ventricular contraction and we're gonna start calling them PVCs for short. So we'll look at a couple normal cardiac cycles. Here's a P wave, QRS, and a T wave. Look at that really nice QRS complex. Pretty high amplitude, it's narrow, it's skinny. That's a good QRS. Next cycle, P wave, QRS, T wave. Again, this is a really good QRS complex. But then notice what happens after this T wave. Here we have an abnormal QRS complex. 
Again, it's abnormal because it's wide and it's round. Usually in PVCs, they're gonna be about the same height as their regular normal QRSs, but they're gonna be rounded and wide. This clues you in that you have some form of PVC. Um, unlike the PACs up here, this T wave that precedes the uh, QRS right here, this is only a T wave. It is not also a P wave. And if you think about it, it makes sense. What did we say about this QRS complex when it's wide and rounded at the top? The original signal was not uh, created by the atria, right? If it was created by the atria, we would see a P wave, right? Because that's atrial depolarization. This signal is completely originating in the ventricle, so there is no P wave required for this to activate. It's just happening for whatever reason. There's lots of reasons this can happen, uh, but this is not a P wave. This is purely a T wave from that's uh, uh, um, coming after this QRS complex right here, this normal one, okay? You'll also notice here, we've got actually three more normal cardiac cycles, and then there's another PVC right here. Each of these is a PVC. If you look at this one, it actually goes down. That's very weird. Um, it's roughly in the same place where the, the QRS would be, but it goes down. It's wide, it's rounded, um, it's about the same size as this one, so we know it's a PVC, but just understand that when you're looking at these EKG patterns, sometimes that there will be mixes of these PVCs going up and down. Sometimes they'll all go up, sometimes they'll all go down. Or like I said, it could be a mix as it is here. Because uh, this is a mix of at least one going up and at least one going down, this is what we call a polymorphic PVC. Polymorphic, okay? That just means that there's more than one form, okay? If they were all going up, it would be monomorphic. If they were all going down, it would also be monomorphic. But because it's mixed, it's polymorphic, okay? But these are PVCs. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's look at the subtypes of PVCs. Uh, there's three here, although there's a lot more. Um, and you name them similarly. The first one's bigeminy, and then we have trigeminy, and then quadrigeminy. Really, the, the prefix bi, tri, and quad refers to um, how many uh, QRSs you have to count before you get the PVC. Okay, so let's think about that. So I look at this normal QRS right here, and then the very next one is the abnormal one. Okay, I go to the next one, that one's normal, number one. And the abnormal one is number two. Go to the next one that's normal, that's one, and then the abnormal one occurs on the second one. In other words, if I start counting at the first normal QRS, I get to the abnormal one, the PVC, at number two. Or you could think of it that the PVC occurs every two QRSs or every two cardiac cycles. Okay? Because of that, this pattern would be bigeminy. And technically, this would be monomorphic because they all go up. They're all going the same direction. Okay? The second one here is trigeminy. It's trigeminy because the PVC occurs every three QRSs. So if we start at a normal one, this would be one. Here's another normal, that's two. And then the PVC occurs at number three. Then here's a normal one, number one. Normal number two abnormal or the PVC is number three. So because it occurs every three QRSs or every three cycles, this would be trigeminy. This would also be monomorphic because they're all going the same direction. The last one is quadrigeminy, and you can guess what that means, that the, the PVC is gonna occur every four. So here's a normal one, number one, another normal one, number two, another normal one, number three, and then a PVC at four, okay? So this would be quadrigeminy. The other thing to notice here in this particular one is that this is polymorphic because this PVC goes up, this PVC goes down. So this would be a polymorphic quadrigeminy, all right? And notice in each of these cases, every PVC is separated by at least one normal QRS. That's not necessarily the case because over here we have what's called a couplet or couplets. So couplets occur when two PVCs occur in a row and uh, there's no normal QRS separating them. So look over here. You can clearly see two PVCs in a row. This would be one couplet. Also, there's two in a row over here. This would be a second couplet, okay? Um, so that's a couplet, just two PVCs occurring in a row. Now, another type of PVC is ventricular tachycardia, okay? So over here, P wave, QRS, T wave, P wave, QRS, T wave. Got another normal one, P, QRS, T wave. 
And then look right here, I've got a PVC. Okay? I got another PVC right here, that's a couplet. I've got another PVC. So what's going on here? I've actually got five PVCs in a row. This right here would be ventricular tachycardia. Now, how do you differentiate the couplet from ventricular tachycardia, also called VTAC for short? Well, VTAC is more than two in a row. It has to be at least three of these uh, PVCs in a row. So VTAC is at least three PVCs in a row, and we have five of them, okay? So this would be VTAC because we have more than three PVCs. So now we have to differentiate unsustained VTAC from what we have down here, sustained VTAC. So up here is technically unsustained VTAC. So unsustained VTAC on the lower end has to have at least three of these PVCs in a row. But it can't continue for more than 30 seconds, okay? As long as it's under 30 seconds, a span under 30 seconds, and it's more than, th or at least three of these in a row, it would be considered unsustained VTAC, okay? As soon as you have enough of these in a row where it occurs for longer than 30 seconds, it becomes sustained VTAC. Down here is sustained VTAC. This is occurring for longer than 30 seconds. It's certainly more than three in a row, okay? And it's longer than 30 seconds. As long as it occurs consistently longer than 30 seconds, we would term it sustained VTAC or sustained ventricular tachycardia, okay? So as you can see, uh, the, the PVCs are premature ventricular contractions. It's a pretty broad class of EKG patterns, okay? Uh, you obviously should be able to recognize uh, the basics of it, but then um, recognize bigeminy, trigeminy, quadrigeminy, couplets, and then unsustained and sustained ventricular tachycardia. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of premature atrial and premature ventricular contractions. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.